Good afternoon from New York. You are hearing the voice of Patricia Angelin in New York, as I said, at Alba Technique, and you are at all the feels with this beautiful Easter lily. And let me turn the camera around. And here I am, and there you are. And thank you very much for joining me for all the feels. Today, I had come across a poem in our poetry series here by the great 19th century poet Walt Whitman. And Mr. Whitman, Whit, uh, Mr. Whitman, by the time he wrote this, was very elderly and living in Camden, New Jersey, toward the end of his life. And when I went to my copy of his most famous Leaves of Grass compilation, this particular poem wasn't in it. And so I googled it to see, and come to find out that it was published in the New York Herald, which was the newspaper um, Herald Square you've heard of in New York. Well, that was where it was, and that's why it's Herald Square at uh, between 34th and 32nd Street in New York City at Broadway. And um, this newspaper was, you know, very, very famous, and it published Walt Whitman. And in 1888, he wrote a poem entitled The First Dandelion for Spring. It's very short, it's very simple. I just skimmed over it quickly at one point and I thought, oh, this is really wonderful. You know, we just, you know, we can talk about, you know, our feelings about spring coming and how fatigued we get with winter. And I realized that those of my listeners who are from the Southern Hemisphere, that you know, you're not in spring, you're going into fall. Um, and you're not going into spring, summer, you're going into fall, winter. So it does seem to be kind of apt that with this particular poem ran in the New York Herald on the, was it the 12th? I think it was the 12th of, yeah, March 12th, 1888. And the very day that he was talking about one of the harbingers of spring it was the um, great blizzard of the Northeast of 1888, which was evidently well, like dumped several feet of snow on the entire Northeastern United States. And so nobody was in the mood for reading about a pretty little dandelion and spring coming. They were like, spring hell, I'm digging out. And so I just was kind of tickled by that because, you know, the weather affects us so much. One of our weather women, oh my gosh, if it could be 85 degrees year long and she could go to the beach, that is what would make her most fully happy. And meanwhile, you know, somebody like me, that kind of a day could literally kill me. So here you have this broad range of an ability to, to deal with, with our feelings in relation to weather. If one is living in um, the northern in Canada or in the um, north central United States, the mountain regions, you've had a lot of cold. You've had long cold, and so this the spring typical cold warm, cold warm. You know when is spring? When is spring? More snow just got dumped last night on one of my friends in the northeastern part of Pennsylvania, and so this will very much resonate with her. So here's the first dandelion by Walt Whitman. Simple and fresh and fair from winter's clothes emerging, as if no artifice of fashion, business, politics had ever been. Forth from its sunny nook of sheltered grass, innocent, golden, Calm as the dawn, the spring's first dandelion shows its trustful face. So that's absolutely delightful. But of course, since it ran in the newspaper on the day of that great blizzard, this is the um, mocking parody verse that got published like two days after this. The first blizzard simple and fresh and fierce from winter's clothes emerging as if no artifice of summer business politics had ever been forth from its snowy nook of shivering glaciers innocent silver pale as the dawn 
the spring's first blizzard shows its rival face. And not quite finished, the Herald ran another mocking poem the third day after his poem appeared. And that is entitled, Served Him Right. The poet began an ode to spring. Hail, lusty march! Thy airs inspire my muse of flowers and love to sing. And then the blizzard struck the lyre. And then they just didn't finish it. It was like it struck, it struck the musical instrument from which the poet, what the poet was strumming while writing. It's like struck it, and then there isn't anything else. Like, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, I thought that that was just a, a mildly amusing thing. Um, he his reputation obviously did survive his juxtaposition and counterpoint of spring with the great blizzard of 1888. And um, in the final version, which evidently I do not have, his deathbed version, as they say, of his famous Leaves of Grass, this poem, you know, is considered in wider context and it is in his final version of Leaves of Grass. So, whatever autumn or spring weather, depending upon whether you are above or below the equator, you are experiencing, read a little bit of Walt Whitman for yourself and have a little bit of a lightness of heart, whether it's thinking about dandelions in the north of the equator or beauty of falling leaves in the south of the equator. Uh, there we are, all the fields. And I'm Patricia Angelin of Albo Technique and thank you very, very much for joining me.